Mom. Yeah. Oh, this yeah. one? This one? Oh, it's just a No, no, no. no. Yes. This one. This one. No, this one. these four are going to be watermelon right so here. So this one right here is the one you can do. make a little hole. Oh. Dive it in. Dive it in. Today our meal prep video went up. One of the commenters said to take those baked potatoes we made, cut them up, and fry them for hash browns. So we're doing that for lunch today. We're going to make some eggs and some mm, eggs. I'm gonna fried them. potatoes. That'll be really good. And she also said to cut them in strips when they're cold. Oh, goodness. <laughs> and um, put them in the oven for fries. Another balloon, another balloon. But it works especially well if they're not split, she said. So thank you for that comment. This is just the perfect lunch today. Can I go another banana? <laughs> Yum. Bella's our best egg maker in the house, even better than dad, I think. Definitely better than me. No, yours have surpassed Judah's. <laughs> I think her secret is she doesn't overcook them. I also like Mom. to put in all the ingredients Mom. before I start cooking. Mom. Uh, Mom. Oh. Mom let me crack one egg. Oh yes, man. Like me and Noelle made a machine that turns Noelle into me. I'm gonna turn into Tori. Good morning guys. The last couple clips were from the last couple of days, and I've been meaning to vlog for a couple days. <laughs> Yesterday was not a good day for me, but I'll tell you more about that later. But look, you. Oh, he's my king. <laughs> oh, you guys, wow. You guys got a whole thing going on here today. They are playing some big game, and I have not gotten ready yet because I want to make sure I work out before I get ready, so that's how. <sighs> That's how sometimes I make sure I find time for it in these mornings that are not going quite the way I want. <laughs> so I'm going to try to do that now while these kids finish their game. Even though it's 9, we're usually doing school by now, but they're having too much fun. We're just going to let that fun go on. What are you guys playing? Star Wars. Really? Star Wars Pirates. And look what we're dealing with out here. So gross. <laughs> it's beautiful. It looks like Christmas. But also, oh. I have been running recently and Seth is sleeping right now, so I need to go run on the treadmill before he wakes up. I'm back, red faced, but I feel a lot better. Yesterday I didn't work out and I should have. I've been working out for a while and boy, I felt beat yesterday. I did not feel good because my child is not sleeping well at night and I should have worked out instead of drinking more caffeine. <laughs> it didn't work well for me. So today hopefully we're getting started on the right foot. Look who's in. Bye. Okay. <laughs> uh, Eli is watching Charlotte's Web because we just finished the book yesterday, him and I. And a few kids are watching with him. So it's kind of an unusual school morning for us, but when there is a good movie based on the book we read, we try to watch it. And there's some fighting going on. Okay, Eli, what did you think? Uh, it's kind of boring because I already read the book. What did you like better, the book or the movie? <coughs> book. The movie Mr. Pike. <laughs> I think pretty much everybody in all time thinks the books are better than movies because movies miss parts. I heard if you read the book first, you think that the book is better, or if you read the movie first, you think the movie. If you watch the movie first, you think the movie. Oh, is that could be. He said they missed the part about Charlotte talking about her cousins, and he liked that part. The story. <laughs> the stories about her cousins. <laughs> it was a good movie though. We did the live action one. Because I think that one's cute. Isn't Julia Roberts the voice of Charlotte? It's a good one. Did you like it? Mm -hmm. You have peanut butter on your face. Was that a good peanut butter roll up? Uh-uh. No? I don't like peanut butter. Oh, you don't like anything these days. But you still eat it. So after my eighth child, I probably could have and would have made a video for you about how to get your child to sleep through the night. 
my first, second, and eighth all slept through the night, like talk, I'm talking 12 hours a night at two months old. My fourth, fifth, and sixth all slept through the night at four months old. And my third, Luca, he slept through the night at six months old. And Noel, my seventh, she slept through the night at one year, but for most of that time, she would just wake up once a night and just come to my bed. I would nurse her and fall asleep with her. So it was always just once a night or less. Anyway, and then, you know, my eighth came after that and slept at two months again. So I felt like I pretty much had a good system. I read, before I had babies, I read Baby Wise, and I don't like everything in Baby Wise, but I kind of took the routine of it and putting them to bed awake, letting them fall asleep by themselves very early, um, following a cycle of they sleep, they wake up and eat, and then they play, and then they sleep, so that you don't nurse them down to sleep, and that kind of cycle. Just I just sort of followed that cycle, got them on a schedule throughout the day, as soon as they kind of naturally were tend toward it, and Mom, then they would sleep Can I go the outside? Um, you need to dress up for it well, yes. Me too? Mom. Dress up for it well, yes. Socks a and boots. Is, a snowman no. is melting. Oh, everything's melting fast. So anyway, that is, I felt like an expert. And now I think that if you ever feel like an expert in what, any area of parenting, any one area, you probably have not had enough children because number nine and 10 humbled my opinion of myself in the sleeping child area. They have not been good sleepers at all. What? Now Destiny did start sleeping uh, through the night around one year, but she was up not just at one peaceful time a night She was up many times a night and at five months I think I finally had to sleep train her which I've never had to do where I had to like um, Let her cry and just Go pat her and not pick her up just to get her to sleep during the days because she wouldn't want me to hold her to sleep and all that Seth has even been worse. Although I, I did the sleep training thing with him again. I did a little earlier, like three and a half months. And I would go in like after 10 minutes and try to calm him down, you know, pat him, but not pick him up. He does go to sleep on his own. Like I lay him down during the day and he goes to sleep on his own. And at night he is up three to four times a night. Sometimes he'll wake up every half an hour to an hour. If I bring him to bed with me and nurse him, he wakes up every half an hour to an hour, but I feel like I sleep better because I sleep while I'm nursing him. Um, so then I force myself for a while to get up and nurse him, and it will take him a while to eat, and then he still only sleeps like two hours at a time, sometimes three. It has been rough, and it's been worse just lately. But I think they both have reflux. I don't know, maybe they're colicky, I'm not sure. <laughs> They just have not followed the patterns of my other kids at all. And I did get reflux medicine for Seth. Um, the doctor prescribed some. It did help him at nights. He was crying like four hours straight, just crying and really kicking his legs and stuff. So the last couple of nights I've given him his Zantac again because we had kind of weaned off of it. He wasn't really crying like that anymore. Um, but yeah, since it's been worse and he has been real fussy in the evenings and seems in pain, I've done that again. So I don't, I don't know what the deal is, but I do know I've been humbled in my opinion of knowing how to get babies to sleep. I'm not looking for opinions necessarily because there are a thousand out there, I'm sure, that will tell me all different ways. But I am here to tell you that I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> my 10th baby, I have no idea how to get him to sleep and I'm just tired. But experience has told me, it has told me that eventually he will sleep through the night. And so I just hold on to that, that this is a season. I, he needs what he needs, so I'm going to take care of his needs. Um, and eventually sleep will come again. The, the hardest part for me is I haven't been able to get up in the mornings and just be on top of my day because I am so tired in the mornings and I'm not a good napper. I am so tired in the mornings. So finding time to pray and read my Bible by myself or just collect my thoughts, put on makeup in the morning, uh, work out. It is so hard. I'm trying to find times during my day to do that because I end up waking up when I have to with the little girls or with him. He tends to wake up every half an hour from like five and nurse, want to nurse, like just all morning. It's I've never had a kid do that before. <laughs> I just don't know. And it's just a season. It's a unique season for me. It's been challenging, but it will come to an end. 
<laughs> and we've had a lot of bonding time together. Yes, we have. Yes, we have. I'm trying an app right now that I'm putting his sleep times in to the app. I'm just using the free function on it and it kind of, just to track when he's sleeping to see if I can work with him to stretch out his uh, night sleeping times, I don't even know. But it is giving me suggestions of when I should lay him down, which is interesting. I actually am weary of anything that tells you what, anything or anybody, any book, that tells you what you should be doing. Like, you should have these systems in your home. If a YouTuber is telling me that, I tend to turn them off because, I don't know, everybody's different. And what works for people, different people, different babies, <laughs> is different for everybody. I like to hear what other people do and get ideas from it. I just don't like when they tell me exactly how. I should be doing it for my situation and my child, you know? I don't know if I'm alone in that, but I try to use that rhetoric when I talk on here too and not you should or this is the way. Um, this is how I do it. <laughs> and if you can get some inspiration from it, great. Uh, don't get inspiration from how I deal with Seth in his sleeping right now because I have zero to give you. <laughs> it's not going well, right? My phone says it's almost time for your nap time. <laughs> Looking good. Bye. Bye. Yesterday it was 34 degrees, just above freezing, and that is a very thick, heavy, wet snow. That's what we call packing snow. Yeah. It's the best for like making snow forts because it all sticks together. Yeah. And then sledding. Snow 101. <laughs> what? No cough. No coughing. You got boogers, dude. Should we work on that? My phone says he needs to go to bed in 37 minutes, but he's been up for an hour 40 or something. So I don't know if I like the phone app because I tend to think the babies do better when they go to sleep earlier normally. Like an, I, they're only up an hour and a half, two hours at the most because you don't want them to get overtired and then they don't fall asleep as well. <sighs> but obviously we've learned lately that I don't know as much as I think I do. So maybe I'll follow the phone's advice. I don't know. Does this phone app have you figured out? I sure don't. <laughs> I can tell he's ready to sleep now. He's just getting a little agitated. That's your sign, isn't it? I got the nap time down for him. We got that figured out, don't we? <laughs> Normally with my babies, once the nap time is figured out, which usually is a lot earlier than five months, they just sleep. <laughs> Judah always has an audiobook in his ear. But... This is our sad news, guys. We're not seeing much in these. Oh, we can't see through the camera, really at all. Do you see what you're supposed to see there? Nope. I wanna see what this is. We don't see any veining. We can't really see like a little embryo. Some of them we just see yolks. It's really sad. I don't know what we did wrong. These eggs have been a big bummer. <laughs> Uh, honestly, we talked about homesteading the other day, and I really would love to homestead. Some of y'all think I'm really lazy and just don't want the work. I would love to, but I'm very insecure about my ability to grow things. I'm not good at that at all. My mom had huge gardens when I was a kid. She grew up in Nigeria, and she learned the Nigerian way of gardening, like that people, like individuals would do. And so she always had this massive garden in our backyard, and I had zero interest in it, kind of like I had zero interest in cooking. <laughs> And so I just didn't learn it. Solo knows it better, but he struggles to keep up because of time, too. So that's really why we don't want to do it. Although the idea of growing food, I love that idea. And I wish I was better at it. I cannot keep a houseplant alive. <laughs> and now, apparently, I can't keep duck eggs alive, either. So I'm not very good at homesteading type things. And I really wish I was. We have had some good gardens in the past, but... Um, Solo kind of tells me what to do with them and I do whatever he tells me. So I'm learning slowly. Well, this is a very strange part of our life right now that is worth documenting, I guess. Right, Solo? What are we documenting? <laughs> We're documenting the fact that church is strange right now. <laughs> At least how we get to the means to the end. Look at that picture I brought down from our bedroom. So cool. I love that picture. I like my other picture yeah. too. I guess I like my taste in artwork. <laughs> We're changing out his background today, so he's about to preach. What are you guys playing? What? Oh, okay. You guys are probably gonna have to find another spot to play your game right now. Yeah, this gives him a little space to move. <laughs> Should be good. 
The lights are way too bright for my pale face, so it'll work perfectly for him. I think we're ready. Okay, it's time to wrap this up, but I had to tell you that my duck egg lady wrote me back and she is also a homeschooler and she was more than happy to help us. She said she's gonna see how her ducks do this weekend and see if they lay some good eggs and send us some more. I think we've been doing everything right. She said we, it might have just been in the mail that they, they were really cold or something, I'm not sure. She sent me a whole thing of just what to do for the eggs and a couple of tricks that can help. That is super helpful, really nice of her. I don't even know that I need six. I just want two of them to hatch, so I don't know what she'll do, but she's in communication with me and she's really nice. I've heard that working with people on Etsy, they're really, it's really fun to work with them and nice and stuff and I, this is my first experience and I've loved it so far. She has a forever customer in me. If I ever hatch eggs again, I will use her because she's been so helpful with our poor sad little duck eggs. Although I will give them a few more days, see what happens. We are putting together one of the dinners that we meal prepped, cutting up leftover chicken and broths. We've got veggies and rice. Seth's trying to go back to sleep. He was fussy and my phone told me he was ready too. <laughs> Our living room's back together except for the pictures. Yay! Good job! The older kids were going star crazy at home and so they wanted to go out to eat. Drive through, pick up service and use their own money. So the older four went. They're out somewhere eating something. And today I only have to, I only have to feed the five kids. It's so easy. It's the easiest thing I've ever had to do. Easiest meal ever. Five kids. Guys, do you want to say hi? hi? It's so funny how perspective goes. When I, when we had five kids, it felt like a lot of kids. And now when I have five to feed, it feels like a piece of cake. Hi.